Survivor News. 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 Dot dot dot. Hello, hello, and welcome to this week's Survivor News, covering Survivor Season 46, Episode 9. We are so excited this week. We are joined by our favorite baby boy, Jack Atkins, from The Circle Season 2. What's poppin'? What's up, Bryce? What's up? I'm so excited for this episode. We had another good one following off a banger last week. And we got a great guest today, too, so I'm very excited to get into this one. Well, yes. Let's also welcome the winner of Survivor Season 36, the first merge boots of Winners at War. He is a GOAT coming on Amazon Prime very, very soon. And, and... A co-host of the official Survivor screening of a pre-panel early at Chicago State University when DZ was popping. Good to be here. Thanks. Glad to be back. It's awesome. Reporting live from Chicago. Yes. Now, listen, let, can, can we get a drum roll from Jack and Wendell? Um, let's bring to the Purple Pants Podcast Survivor News the first ever real official winner the podcast oh. has ever seen <laughs> from oh, Survivor yes. season 44, the one, the only, the jam to the jam. Ding. The double Y. Yes, how you doing? Oh my god, I'm so excited. I finally made it. I'm happy you finally found my phone number in your Rolodex. <laughs> the shade Damn. already. Uh, we always have your number. Uh, <laughs> Ouch. A, how are you, Jam? Oh, I'm super happy. I'm so excited. Oh, today was a little messy at work. We have no power. We work with a generator, but I'm so excited I get to party with you and like talk about. The most amazing thing ever that on TV is the Survivor, and I love it. We are so excited to have you here, Jam. Before we get into Thank episode you. nine, we have some um, housekeeping. Mm -hmm. Wendell and I were just in Chicago, and we have to give a huge shout out to CBS and my Kagiyan sister, Jatia, because CBS had the baby boys hosting an official pre-screening of this episode this Tuesday at Chicago State University. And we had some amazing people there, some amazing fans, some amazing students. It was so much fun to be there with CBS. Wendizi, um, what you think about the pre-screening? I think it was a special episode to have a pre-screening, first of all, because it was another fun one. This this season has obviously gotten really good really fast. Um, but what was really special to me was the fact that they reached out to us to go to a PBI to, um, you know, host a Survivor event, a CBS event. We do a lot of Survivor events on our own with Bryce and Wen, And for, you know, the big dogs to reach out to us to kind of partner with them, it just felt really special. And it made for a great time. Absolutely. And if you were in Chicago last night, Wednesday, at the Bryce and Wynn, Bryce and Wynn official watch party of the BWP Tour 46, Bay Bay, Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. We had a time. The one thing that we love about our Bryce and Wynn events, you never know, you might see Jam Jam. You know, you never know who you might see at a Bryce and Wynn event. And we were just so excited to have Taylor, and Xavier, Xander, Austin, so many people uh, at the event. Chicago showed out and showed up. It was really giving Jack uh, a zaddy fest, in my opinion. <laughs> the three-headed zaddy right there. Uh, okay. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, I know Jam would have loved to been in this picture with me. Girl, uh, <laughs> I would have been on top of you right there. You're like, that's my spot right there on the cloud. Oh my gosh. It was uh so good to see like Liana and Xander. So good to see Andy and <laughs> the rest of the Survivor community. It was so good just to see so many people and so many amazing fans. There were so many people uh from the University of Chicago, Jack. Uh they was giving me some ish like, hey, 
we agree with Jack. We like so you had some really? stands in the building, yes. From you Chicago, from Chicago from State. Chicago, uh, from the school that you went to, there was a beautiful black sister and her brother, and she was like, Baby boy, I gotta let you know. I'm signed with Jack. Uh, I don't know Man. what y'all thing is with the what's your mascot, your the maroons. The maroons. <laughs> I was like, oh. ferocious color right there. <laughs> uh, so uh, Chicago truly was such an amazing time. When Dizzy, what you what, what you feel about Chicago? It was special, like you said. Andy was there. Uh, winner of Big Brother, which season? 13, 15? 15, 15? I don't and know. If you recall, and he's a big he's a big Survivor fan, and he is big on the Twitters, and he yes. has a little. He had a little beef with the entire cast of 46. So it was good to get him out there. And, and uh, you know, some people had some words for him. But uh, he is he's he's awesome. And he's awesome. And he's a great sport. So it was great to see him. But, it, yeah, Chicago, this was one of those special stops where people just, it's like people came out of the woodwork. I know a lot of you have seen Squid Game, the challenge. Our buddy Trey was here, player 301. You might remember the gentleman on Squid Game that had his mother with him. That's Trey. Mm -hmm. So um, it was good to see him. And apparently his mother might pop out to one of our events coming up. Whoa. Ooh. Um, That's exciting. I, I hope I'm there. I want to meet her. Yes. I've, I've never had so much FOMO for, for an event. Be, you know, have been in Chicago, my city, not only you guys, but some other friends, my Chicago friends. Uh, and, I mean, the fact that CBS had you guys host that private screening, that's like a, a big level up. So I'm very excited for you guys with that. And hopefully they do some more of that in the future. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited. I, you know, I'll, I'll be out in New York City for the finale. And th there's something about those multi-day events I was saying before we started the podcast, like Chicago and like New York, where you have multiple days. When it's one night, it, it feels like the night just gets started. And then before you know it, the episode's over. But multiple nights, it's like you get, you get the, the meet and greet. Or the, the pre party Tuesday, then the finale Wednesday, then some other stuff Thursday. So I'm I'm very excited uh for what's to come. Yes. And just a shout out to our just entire reality TV family from Darnell from season Survivor Quran, from Jessica from Survivor, from Matt Hoffman, from Liana, from Austin, from Xander. Just so many amazing people there. And you know, wait a minute. Karishma from Amazing, Amazing uh, Race 36. Karishma from Amazing Race was in the building. It was just so many TV crossovers. And so, like, you know, Wendell was telling me to tell y'all, don't have FOMO. No mm -hmm. reason to have FOMO when you could just go. We got Boston. We got Philadelphia. Okay? And word on the block is... Tell them. Jamil. Uh, <laughs> Jam will be in Philadelphia, and then we have the finale. Yes. So I mean, mm. I mean, if anybody have never been to a party, you know, you have to be at the Bryce and Wendell presents whatever they want to do. You have to be there, and if I can make it from Puerto Rico, hey, you can make it anywhere. You better make it. You know what's crazy, Jam, about our Philadelphia event? Uh, Jam's first ever Philly event that he should not have even been at. Mm. You met Jack. Jack was there. Like, that was, yeah. like, so well, yes. like, we were all together. Yes. And I, what I find so interesting is that like, when we first met you, Jam, you were so, like, quiet. And we were like, you know, I was like, hi. And then as the night went on... We got to meet Jam Jam and Oh my God. It was so much fun. It was my first ever whatever party from coming from, you know, playing the game. Um living in Puerto Rico, I would watch all the like promos and stuff. I never made a party. I never made it to any party. So I went as a player and you guys met me and I remember meeting you, Wendell and Bryce, and you were guys so tall. Obviously, Jaggy are so tall, but I was like, <laughs> Oh my god, you guys are so big. My cast is like the tiniest cast ever. And it was such a fun time and yeah memories still last a lifetime absolutely it, i also want to go down memory lane jam because yes. i think you also uh -huh. went to boston with us before and mm -hmm. i wendell always tells me this story where he's like i never really got how f like open the community was until one night mm -hmm. we're in boston and wendell's like i'm looking at the crowd and all of a sudden i see you a jam you and jam just dancing Damn. and like you know just yeah. being ourselves and it's like so yeah. much fun so um yeah boston that that very event i i don't know if boston was before or after philly 
Because obviously it was the season before your season. So that was 43. It was after Philly, yeah. It was my second one, though, and Bry Bryson Wendell. Yeah, so, and Jam starts popping up at these events. And I'm like, and then, you know, as the night goes on, Jam starts coming out of his shell. I'm yeah. Like, Who the hell is this person? I don't know him, but I love him. And he's awesome. And then, of course, uh, obviously, at the end of the season, we see your promo and you got that. What did you say in the in the promo for whatever the next season? I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I can't wait to meet Jeff. I can't wait to not shower, no brush my teeth, poop in the ocean, bring it. And I'm like, you know what? This is going to be a great season. And it lived up to the hype. And you and you won. So, Jam, we you know we love you, you. And we appreciate Thank you. you. And you are one of those special Thank people you. in the community. Thank you. Thank you for adopting me. I really feel like this is like a real family. It's weird. You know, you see it from afar. You think it doesn't happen. Even if you're not like on a reality show or whatever, if you're like a big fan, you can see them over and over again at these events. And they basically become part of one of us, one of you, and it's because all the effort that you guys put into, and you're super amazing. Obviously the VIP parties are like the best to like meet people um, like one-on-one, -on -one. then if they're just in the party, like old people, young people, everybody, families, singles, people who got there, I don't know, you make friends for a lifetime. <laughs> I heard of so many people that go to these parties by themselves one year, and then the next year they just keep hanging out together and they become real friends and that's what it's all about you know and that's why i go people are like why well, you're always on a play and i was like if you guys come with me to one get it <laughs> yes um you summed it up perfectly yeah jam because that's the truth so and what also, i do <laughs> I yeah listen period and also shout out to q because you know q happened to be in chicago and oh, baby yeah. What an episode for Q to be there. Jackery, Jamal, Malik, Quintavious, Chris, Quintavious <laughs> Christian, Walsall, Hubicki, <laughs> 21 Atkins. Please take it away. Oh my gosh. Uh, what an honor. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, I, I, you texted me after the, the, the screening and you were like, I'm excited to hear your thoughts. And so I knew I was going to be in for a bumpy ride, strapped on my seatbelt, threw on my Q skirt, and <laughs> settled in for – grabbed my popcorn and, and settled in for the episode. Not and, man, it was a really – it was another really fun one after the last one. Uh, yeah, so we kick it off. We get back to camp after the wild previous tribal where Q asked to quit. And, you know, there was a lot of predictions and, and talk – you know, between us and online of like, did Q do this on purpose? Is Q going to say, oh, this was all a plan? I was kind of surprised. He was pretty humble and said, I messed up. Like, I made a mistake. And I, and I made a mistake at Tribal asking to quit because I don't really want to quit. Uh, he he kind of owned up to the disaster of his Tribal Council. But people are still upset. I mean, Tiffany's upset that he leaked her idol. Rightfully so. Uh I guess before we get into some some of the more some of the other effects of this tribal council, what do we think about you know sort of Q's reaction and then sort of Tiffany's situation with Q at this point? Well, it was I I haven't I was Tiffany was nice, yeah. They blurred a little bit of the f word when she was like on the night like handling and she was mad. I would have not talked to him the rest of the whole time. Um, no good for me. I was so freaking mad as a player. If you're there, you commit to it. Don't be trying like a fizzy and then trying to F everybody's game because you have like another way to see it. Um, I think she was right on just disconnecting with her and just like, you know, distancing him herself from him because there's no way it was such a big like oops or like whatever he did to try to do his game his way that there's no going back and there's no faking it and there's like I, you know it happened to me on the game i was like with josh i try you know but once i saw i, I was the one out then i was the cue you i need to fix it but if i'm the one with the people then i don't need you you know that's what i think yeah, so people anyway. yeah that and more i don't want to go i feel like q trying to cue us because i feel like in the beginning of the episode it was very much like it's my fault i did it i can't tether went out 
I can't let him. Ha- I can't. I can't have him go out like that. But as the episode goes on, and you hear more Q confessionals. He returns to uppercase Q. He returns to yeah. uppercase Q. Like, but back at the wall, hey, do I? Do I was just like, wait, wait, what's happening? So I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know, but what I can say is, is that at the last tribal, Q said he wanted to reset the game, and baby, he unplugged the PlayStation, he cut the power off at Jam Salon, and <laughs> That's a freaking mess. We running on a generator right now because I, I don't know, I don't know what he did. Hey, but he I just, enjoyed it. He, he, he just shook everything. He, he was like an earthquake with a capital Q. Like the man, he he just, he has this ability to just shake everything up. And what's crazy is this. We saw him get how many? Five, six votes at the end. I, I could still, and usually when that happens, like you're the next person to be voted out. And I could see that. But I could also see a world where this crazy man or these crazy now, like he has jumbled everybody's lives up. So I could see a world where now they're like, you know what? Tip got an idol. She is the threat. Or Kenzie was going against Tip. Against Tip. She's the threat. Or I could still see, or we want to get to the end with Q because no one's going to vote for him. Mm-hmm. So I can still see a world where Big Q mistake. Is out. <laughs> and what's crazy is I could still see a world where Q sits at the end and wins the game. I would hate that. Win the game? I, I don't know. It would, take a, it would take a certain combination of people for, for me to, to see Q winning the game because, like you said, he, he effectively tanked his game last week. And sort of to the debate we had last week, he's almost on that level with Venus where people are not worried about getting them out now because they're like, well, they're not – they're not they're so chaotic. No one wants to work with them. So they're not really a problem right now, and they're not really a problem, a threat to win. Uh, but obviously, if there's a few people on that level, they could all get to the end together. And then it's like, what what happens then? Um, Can we talk ahead. about Venus, though? Like, you know, I love Venus, this episode where she like, so <laughs> y'all trying to, you know, put the band back together and see what's up. And then effectively, they're like, nah, we good. And, and Venus is like. Well, y'all don't understand the game. <laughs> y'all suck. And if you're trying to get with the winner squad, get with me. Uh, I don't care what nobody says. I don't care whether Venus wins the game or whether Venus is out next week or whatever. She is a queen and she is legendary. And I just have so much love for Mother Venus for no matter the situation, no matter if she's at the top, at the bottom, she always going to come in confident and with a plan. She's definitely good TV. She's definitely like good, like entertaining to watch her confessionals. The way she approached people with her confidence, like not thinking that they're going to get mad at her or even like she already knows they're hater. So she doesn't give, you know, two cents about it. But she's like, she goes straight to Hunter. I was like, well, you voted for me. I was like, cause they don't like you. I was like, well, you didn't have to do it. So karma is a bitch, you know? And she like keep popping and popping and popping and popping. And I love her. I love her. Yeah, I don't know if she wins. I don't know if she does whatever well or not. But the way at least that story is being told through her eyes and the way it's like, oh, my God, look at the one they wanted out from Nami from the day one. And now she's basically her on Liz. And we don't know what happened with Liz next episode because that preview was like crazy. So, yeah, it's it's cool to watch. And I she's really an amazing, beautiful person in person and uh, as a character on TV. Really fun. So we have do we have a world where Venus can win? No, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, some I, game to be played. I think I I think she could win next to Q and Liz. Yeah, if <laughs> well, maybe Liz. No, but the thing with Liz is that also she's like aware. It just I don't know what happened. The the preview like threw me off with Liz, so I don't know. Well, don't that. Know. I do want to say, like, Venus, as always, great TV. It, I thought it was so funny when Hunter was like, well, I just threw in a vote for, for you because I knew no one would get mad. And she was like, well, I'm mad. He's like, but you're always mad. <laughs> so, honestly, not wrong um, in strategy-wise. But 
Venus, you know, she's not afraid to play hard. So that's not someone, even though she doesn't have a lot of a lot allies in the game, that's still not someone I would want to be on the wrong side of things with. Um, mm -hmm. But can, that can yeah, I ask y'all a question? Because I need, because y'all guys, in my opinion, are the Mount Rushmore of Survivor. <laughs> we got Jam. We got Wendy's and we got Shaq, okay? Like, <laughs> one of these is not like the other. <laughs> uh, one of these is not like the other. And tell me why Jack and Jam should be there and went to <laughs> <laughs> But I need to know y'all thought on Liz. Like, we, yeah. <laughs> this is, this, that's what I wanted to talk about next. So I'm glad that you're asking about it. Because it's like, I like Liz. Like, I, I mean, I think, but uh, after I seen the preview and after this episode, at this point, I kind of am like, hmm, I could, could understand the, the soda dilemma. Then we get to this, and now it's like, I understand why you're mad at Q, but I don't know. The word well, uh, like... Yeah, I was, I was kind of itching to talk about this because I think Liz's... Liz has started to arrive as a play, like as a presence, but I think the way that she views the game is not really accurate. And I think that's a, a t like a testament to a big issue we've seen this season of every, there's so much talk this season about getting credit for your moves. I mean, we've seen it multiple mm -hmm. times this episode. We've seen it previously. And the fact that Liz gets so emotional and upset about Q overshadowing her move to me, that was actually beneficial for her game, right? She kind of is the like the one spearheading the the um, Tevin vote, and we see time and time again, even last week with Tevin going home. If you're the one who makes a big move and takes the credit for it, that's a recipe to be thrown into the crosshairs next. And so Q effectively tanking his own game at this tribal where she pulls off this move. That doesn't take any credit away from her orchestrating the Tevin blind side, right? She could go to the final tribal council and say, hey, I was the one who really put my foot down and made this move happen. Q, what would Q say? Like, well, actually, I tried to quit and that distracted everybody. So yeah. you should actually vote for me. That To me, I think that was a great thing for Liz where you make this move and then you almost do a little ala Gabler and you could drift back into the background. Yeah. But for some reason, she is so, seems so set on getting credit and that's just been an issue with a lot of the players all season. I think that's why the season is so messy is people are desperate for credit in the moment when in reality, make your move, tuck it away, bring it to final mm -hmm. tribal council and then let it, and then take the credit for it. Yeah. Cause at the end, at the end, it's obviously you have to make it to the end. It's what I said when I was on the game I was like the, the strategy is to get to the final jury. Right. And then when you're there, you control the narrative depending on who's there with you because the story can be different. Had I been there with Carson, probably my argument would have been different, but he wasn't there, right? So um, going back to Liz, yeah, she needed to chill out and don't get it too seriously. She knew what she did, get there to the end, don't ruffle feathers, don't get it personal. If you take anything personal, then obviously like you cloud your judgment. Um, but the thing with Liz and the way I see her playing the game because she wasn't such a powerful tribe that she was always winning. When you are in other tribes and you don't know the dynamics, you just know gossip of what happened. But then you have a person on this big group that comes and goes like, I'm willing to vote this person out. Everybody that's in the other tribes is like, perfect. So you're not with them. You want to vote them out? I want to vote them out. And she's just like climbing a little bit, but also staying by herself, right? Because she's willing to tell other people, I'm going to vote people from my original tribe, but she's also alone, right? So I don't know what that means in the future. And I don't think she should value the fact that she's like controlling the votes because she's putting people to be sacrificed. But there are also her numbers. So I don't know what she's going to think that's going to... I don't know if she knows that's going to affect her in Definitely. the future because then if she gets at the end with um, Ben, Charlie, and Maria, and then Kenzie and Tiffany, and then she's there by herself, she could keep climbing, but they can also go like, Let's vote her out because she's the only NAMI and all the jury is NAMI. They're going to vote for her to win. You know, that's what we did in 44. Like we didn't want Lauren or Jamie there because all everybody was from their tribe. They were going to get all their votes. But I don't know if she's aware of that. She should be paying it. Everybody at this point needs to know why they're putting people in the jury. And I don't know if they're doing it for the right reasons. Mm. 
Yeah, I agree. I um, <laughs> I, I agree so much, but I also feel like there's, and I, I want to be nice, uh, but I also get from sometimes seeing Liz's complaints, I be kind of looking at it kind of like, is it given? Can I speak to the manager vibes? Like I don't know. Oh no! I, I don't do it like that. No, but I don't know. I'm with you, Bryce. I'm but with you. and also like what you said, uh, Jam, with like Lauren and Jamie on your season. I don't know if it's a case that we're just not seeing the whole story. Oh, of probably. Liz. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? And so like mm -hmm. when we're seeing her be so mad and so upset, like me as mm -hmm. a viewer, I'm like. Well, girl, I haven't seen anything. So it's like, it's hard for me to put my mm. tongue on the pole. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Your tongue on the pole. What? I, that, I've never, I I never, never heard, heard that you say that was a problem. I never heard you say that was a problem that Bryce had. <laughs> Bryce was Sorry. searching for the most sexual analogy yeah no, no. Made that it's, one it's, up. Only, it's, it's only sexual because you thought it was Wendell. thank you but it's, it's not a, that's not afraid no on it's, the pole. it's the first thing that dropped that's in what my bryce throat. said at the challenge after <laughs> hunter hung backwards last week <laughs> no, but it it's i don't know but i like liz and i like what she gives but for me it's like the way that her argument is and how strong she's going I, as a viewer that is just watching the show, I don't have enough justifications for it. So it's hard for me to like want to be on Liz's side. Yeah, exactly. I think the thing that and we see it in the preview, I think the thing that she's complaining about, about this whole credit thing is not a justifiable reason. And we see it with other players like Tiff too. I mean, obviously I understand being upset with Q, right? But I think there becomes a point when you have to stop being like, oh, you ruined my game. My game's over. Because that's sort of like a self-fulfilling prophecy if you're just like, my game is is in is in the like in the shitter. Like you gotta be like Q, like it's it's reasonable to be mad at Q. It's reasonable not to work with Q. But if you just go around telling everyone that your game's ruined, I think that kind of gives a bad perception about your gameplay. Now, I think Tiff's is a great player, but I I'm I'm just like, and that's with Liz too, is like when you're like, Oh, you ruined my game, my game is shot, everyone's gonna be like, Oh. They're uh, saying their game is 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 bad. They're now, saying their game's over. Now, now, now Jackery, I you know I be, I, I gotta clock in for this one because I don't see the comparison with Tiffany. I I don't because if anything, I feel like Tiffany of all people of this season had is the victim of being a great and loyal player to the point that like you've got people tanking your game. Because you're loyal and you now people are jumping shit. Now we got Kenzie like saying, mm -hmm. Well, shoot, it's it's if we if we're at the shitter, it's it's time to poop, oh. poop on Tiffany because uh, like <laughs> Tiffany's been playing a great game, Stella. No, no, that wasn't a I wasn't a complaint about anything else about Tiffany's game. It's more so about <laughs> like there's a certain level of when someone messes up your game. You can't just keep, and this is this is more Liz because we see that happens okay, next right, episode. Well, it's it more Liz. Me. Well, but it's 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 a to me it's like at some point, and maybe Tiff did the right amount of complaining, right? Maybe it seemed like she stopped, but it's sort of like at some point to be like, you know, it's the final nine. You're like, oh, my game's ruined, and you just kind of repeat that narrative. For me, I'd be like, it's not ruined. You're still you're still here. Like you could. But anyways, I, I, I want to is in that category. I think it's like, yo, for, for a minute, I feel like she was. No, she, yeah, but she, you have the right to respond to someone actually putting your business way out there. And I think for that's sure. she did. She was like, that, like, cause an idol on the low could be a game winning thing for her. But now it's out there to where she almost wants to burn. Mm -hmm. So you can actually absolutely you have the right to respond to someone doing that. But I think Tiff is the person that responds and also starts playing. I don't think she's going to sit in the woe with me thing. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so either. That was just more of a like a loose comparison of either – like, and, and it, it seems like she's – I mean, Tiff had a great episode. So that's why I don't – I'm not going to harp on it. This is, but to me, it's just like there's only so much – right? Like Liz next week, if she's talking – I assume this is her talking to Q about, hey, two votes ago, you, you took the credit of my move, right? So – you know, three, four days later, you can't be like, 
woe is me, my game's ruined, Q, you like, you took my move, right? You have to move on. And so that's why I think Liz is really struggling. But back to what Jam Jam was saying too about Liz, and, and this, again, I think Liz in this episode is an example of an issue that a lot of players this season are having, is that people are making moves, but the moves a lot of times are taking out your own ally. And because because it works for everybody else, they're down, but that doesn't really mean you like masterfully orchestrated a move just because you or blindsided your closest or one of your closer allies when it didn't make sense for you, right? Like I think this week, Kenzie wanting to target Tiff didn't make any sense. Like it could have been a good blindside from a blindside standpoint, but from a strategic standpoint, I don't understand everyone in the season seems to have an obsession with taking out their closest ally other than maybe like a Maria and a Charlie or a Hunter mm-hmm. and a Tevin. But it's like at the final nine, the final 10, the final 11, you need to have people around you that are, are going to stick with you, not make moves on your allies just because they're threats, you know? But Kenzie, Kenzie's been doing that since they were at the annual. Kenzie did it um, way early when she went to Jess and Banu, and she was like, let's take Tiffany and Q out. And then Banu and Jess were like, went to the other two, and they were like, Kenzie's going after you. Um, she's been doing it. it I guess it's her idea of how she should play the game um and maybe she planned that when she was going to fiji to play and that's what i'm gonna do and this is what i'm gonna do i mean i think she's a great player but sometimes you need to like control yourself and know who you're saying it to how many people test the water out don't say to three people at a time that don't have anything going on together you know one of them is going to go to the extra person and talk to the other person because the other two already know and you want your ally to know and then the other ally have more friends on the other side yeah i think um if she was going to do it she needed to tippy toe with somebody that was gonna commit to it making it work and not throwing it out there in front of three people you need to like you know you you test the waters you know because in front of three people everybody's gonna go like yes nobody's gonna tell her wait a minute, are you sure? Let's figure it out. Let's count the thing. Let's like play it out. So yeah, she's got a little excited and it would have been really cool to watch, but I don't think it would have, it, I don't think she did it the right way. Mm-hmm. I think Kenzie is an awesome character. I think, mm-hmm. uh, I think she's a very solid survivor player. Um, I do, I do see some cracks in that. Like sometimes she keeps it funky with people and like, instead of just being fake with them, like in this episode, like I think whatever she said with Q was just like, bro, like get out of here. You know, it's like she didn't even give him the time of the day. And it's like, man, yeah. if you're just fake with this man, then mm-hmm. if at the end, he won't remember that one. He might not remember yeah. the conversation. But I say all that to say when I say I think Kenzie's an awesome character because she does bring that to the table. And like her eye rolls or her like snide remarks, it's like she's one of these characters that's I don't want to call her a villain. But there's something like, like something antagonistic. Like, yeah, yeah. I enjoy it. It's and the way she narrates and her phrases, I'm sorry, are like super fun and right. like super memor- memorable. Sorry, Bryce. People. No, no, right. I agree with you, Jam. And I agree with you, Wendell. But also, it's so interesting, right? Because I, first of all, I want blood. Winner pick. Well, I mean, she is my winner pick. <laughs> Uh, but I want blood for Kenzie for doing what you did to Tiffany, right? So, Kenzie, you're not off the hook. Spicy <laughs> Bricey is going to clock in. However, this is why I kind of respect Kenzie. After that tribal last week, and we see how chaotic everything is, Um I wonder if Kenzie is looking at herself and looking at everyone like, well, there's a possibility that like Q might be on the jury or Q might be at the end. And it's like, maybe I actually need to make a move to differentiate myself. And so like when she said to vote Tiffany, I said, bitch, what? But also (laughs) in my opinion, that's like a move of like a cold blooded gangster killer and i'm like maybe 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 outside of my it's a look of uh, her pose and how she look i'm like maybe kenzie has uh, i don't know that that just says something to me and again it's like you could look at it like girl what you doing but also it's like eat or be eaten 
And if that's what I got to do, I would love to know, Jam, what do you think of the comparison? Or what, what do you, how would you compare the Tinka 3 to the Yanu 3? <laughs> the Tinka 3 is way superior. <laughs> um, I mean, the Yanu 3 are not Yanu 3 anymore. The Tinka 3 were Tinka 3 to the end. And yeah, I know at the end they made it look like I wanted Carolyn out. I was just playing the idea around because I, I know Carolyn is way more logical than what she was showing during the game but on the thing with um i let you threw me out i was like i'm gonna say this when he's done and then you brought the ticket three and i'm like blah, blah, blah. um so i um the, the the thing with the ticket three is like we were always working together behind the scenes and nobody knew we were playing behind the scenes and that's why i think we were such a good trio everybody thought carolina and i were always um fighting everybody thought um carson was with ratu because he switched to ratu um and we were always letting letting people have their choice the two groups and then we were jumping to what was benefiting us right and that's why we got to the end i don't think yanu is working that coherent together i mean it's obvious like the girls hate q can't see one tiffany out i think the only one that wanted to work with everybody is tiffany um and I was gonna say something about Kenzie like doing this move. This move, like when you betray your like your ally, and it's like good move. It needs to be like when Jesse got Cody out, right? It's like right at the end, you have your backup plan. You know, you're almost to the end because if you do this too early, like you betray your closest ally too early. You know what's gonna happen next? Everybody's gonna go you out because it was a great move, and you betray your ally. Nobody's gonna trust you. But um, how did that work out for Jesse? Uh, Jesse lost fire, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't voted out. So. <laughs> so if you do that move, make sure you know. <laughs> if you go and you don't have to make fire. Or win immunity. No, but he did it really close to the end. Like, there were not a lot of numbers to backfire. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I totally agree. I think that sort of big move against an ally that could beat you at the end, that has to happen a little bit later. So I think Kenzie's a great player. I think she's almost a little bit too eager to make these big moves, uh, but she's been building great social bonds. But I mean, she, she, I think the Tiffany bond side, it's a little bit early. That's, that's someone you've been pretty locked in with and she's a good player too. Like they've been in a great position. So turning on your ally, you know, could lead to some trouble. And then even when they find out that Tiffany has an idol that she's planning to play and they, they, they want to go for, I guess, Hunter, she's like, Oh, that's just like she's like that's just boring. Like I don't want to do something boring, and sometimes the boring move is the right move. And so I, yeah. I think that's a valuable lesson. And I think that's a lesson a lot of players this season could potentially learn. But sometimes that straightforward move is, is good, and sometimes at the, in the same vein, it's like if someone else has a plan that they want to launch, and it's the plan that you wanted to do anyways, you could be like, yeah, that works for me. Like I don't need to to spearhead every move that I make. Like that's that's how you build too big of a resume to where it's going to take you out. But um, before we get into all that strategy talk for the for the uh, vote out, we have a challenge. Uh, uh, they split into three groups of three. I like that this time they're not. There's not any losing of the votes or anything like that. It's it's just a straightforward like three stage challenge, and they get to pick their groups. Uh, the the group <laughs> selection was pretty interesting. Where uh, Kenzie and Tiff, you know, wanted to pair up, and then Ben's like, "You guys want to rock out together?" And they're like, "Let's let's rock out." Uh, Hunter's like, oh, I haven't worked with Charlie and Maria yet. Like, it would be fun to do a challenge with them. And then Q, Venus, and Liz are just kind of like the leftover three. And it's not really a secret that they're the leftovers, right? They get to the challenge. Um, not only do some of the castaways, like Tiffany, for example, say like, yeah, I want to avoid pairing up with that chaos. That is Q. And she just calls it out. Then Jeff adds on and says, you know, I'm going to go out of my way and say, Q, T Q, Venus, and Liz, you guys are going to be the first ones out. Which we have I don't think we've ever seen Jeff just openly antagonize. I kind of loved it, especially because he ended up being wrong. But I've never heard Jeff be like, yeah, you're not good at this. <laughs> like, it's kind of crazy. Uh, well, I mean, what do we make of that? I think Jeff is forgetting that he is out there in Fiji hosting a show. I think Jeff be thinking he's at home in front of that wooden fireplace and he's like watching the edit. And he's like, dang, Kualus, suckers. Like, 
I, I would have cussed Jeffrey out. Okay. I would have been like, um, excuse me, Jeffrey. Come yeah. do it yourself. Jeff is at, at a point where he don't like, he's yeah. like, I'm going to say and do what I want. Okay. And I think that, you know, he, he has made it clear that he's not casting like, like our historic villain type players. Right. Now we know why. Jeff can, <laughs> Jeff can add the sauce. Jeff can be the spicy Jeff. And it's, and it's entertaining. It's interesting. I don't mind him talking his trash. I like, yeah. I do what I've had. Did he ever did that with you, Wendell or Bryce? Like he did it? Like was like that? Like rooting against other people? Nah, no, I have. He's dead. With that Here's the thing. I'm a. I, I like. I like messy, and I like a party, and I like you know having fun and being spicy and all of that, and staying shit, and then laughing and turning around and going like, "I got you." Love that shit. But in a game of rules, that Jeff is like the referee, like the top man, the one that calls the last shot, the one that does like. Everybody goes like, ask Jeff, ask Jeff, ask Jeff. And he says that. I was like, no way. No, 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 no. I wouldn't have, no, no, no. I complained too much when I was playing. So I would have been like, that's not okay. I, I have something to say about that, Jam. You know what? Now, now that you said that, I think there's something to that. Because there are some people that you can talk trash to them and they're going to play harder and better. And, like, I, I know in sports, like, that happens a lot, like, People talk trash. It's like, all right, let's go, let's get it. And I think yeah. if you talk to a Q like that, you're gonna amp yeah. them up to go hard. But I don't think everyone is from that cloth, so I don't know what it would do to a Venus or to a Liz. So yeah, if the host, executive producer, top dog, El Presidente, that guy is like, yo, y'all about to lose. It's like, bro, yeah. come on, man. Like you see us, what? Why you got to do us like that? Maybe that's why they got popcorn. Right. Well, and first of all, Jeff, you see Last Tribal. Why would you Why would you do that? Yeah. But yeah. what I do love about this spicy Jeff, though, in the new era is we get to have legends like Jelinski. Because if we didn't get such a spicy Jeff, yeah, I don't think right. the Jelinski several would hit as much. And... If you have not already, do yourself a favor. I discovered Jelinski's TikTok. TikTok? Jack oh, are you going to talk I, about I, oh, a couple hours? A couple hours. Because Jelinski is revolutionizing the game. I discovered Jelinski's TikTok through Jack. Do yourself a favor. Uh, go over there and follow Jelinski and let him know Purple Pants Podcast Survivor News sent you. But Jelinski is essentially saying... So <laughs> did y'all know several hours, right? You know, allegedly that means seven hours, right? How many hours do you think is a couple hours? <laughs> Two. Okay. Wendeezy? Two-ish. Jack. Not according to not according <laughs> not to, according to, to Linsky. I, I was there for the uh origin of this uh this idea. We were playing Fortnite. <laughs> with uh, Carla and Charlie Davis. That's the oh. squad right there. Um, Jelinski goes, guys, how long do you guys think a couple hours is? And we we're all like, two, two hours, a couple's two. And he's like, get this. It's four hours. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> he was like, he was like, a couple is two, but hours is plural. And so that means two times two equals four. <laughs> and we were like, Jelinski. I was like, Jelinski, <laughs> out like, what <laughs> that doesn't make any sense i'm like that anything you add an s to anything that's a couple is gonna have an s a so couple say a couple hour <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> uh, 60 uh, minutes but oh, yeah it's exactly it's like a couple minutes would not be four minutes like a couple shoes would not be Oh, poor well, I mean, a couple shoes. shoes would. Be, well, that's that's a bad well, example because well, they come in pairs. Because oh, yes, 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 a couple shoes would be four pairs of shoes. Or two two pairs. No, two a couple, pairs of shoes. A couple pairs. Wait, how, couple wait, how, pairs. how? Shoes is a bad example. Yeah, a couple, a couple, a couple mangoes would not be four mangoes, right? A couple of potatoes would be. That's a, I guess that's a, that's a different semantical. Uh, Sapatos. I got. I got that. Sapatos. Okay. It means shoes. How I say a jam. Sapatos. <laughs> Which is, it sounds cool because it's actually sapato, but 
Zapatos have toes in it. It's like the Linsky math right there with yeah. your words and your pronunciation. He's the gift that keeps giving. Oh, yeah. Hey, I love hey, it. He is spicy on his TikTok. Like last week with Q, he had some gangster music playing. And he was, I was, I was dying. Wow. So go over there to TikTok and shout out to Jelinski. Uh, sorry. But anyway, yeah. Um, so then we get it. I totally agree. I, and I like, I like the spicy Jeff. Like whether you agree or disagree. Yeah. I, if I was a player out there, I'd be like, damn, Jeff, you're, you're rude against me. <laughs> like, what? Jeff, Jeff, is, Jeff is spicy. Jeff will get Ooh. it down, let you know, mess a little bit with your head, have fun with it, especially more towards the end. He's like yeah. more like, you know, when they were there setting the challenges on or whatever, he will like let you know a little bit of himself. But regarding games and challenges, that's a whole nother thing in my head. Yeah. I remember when I was like talking to Jeff one day and I was like, well, you know, those big challenges with a lot of stations like super long and we were, he's the one that reviews the challenges and he goes little station by station because he wants everybody to hear the same explanation, right? Which is fair. And that's my whole thing with the fair thing. But he goes like, explain the whole thing. And then we're walking back. It takes like five minutes to walk back to the mat. And I like have my little fan moment and I go like, so Jeff, right? I was like, I get to get to Jeff. Oh my God. I was like, Jeff, don't you get tired of being like so intense all the time? Because he's like, ah, guys, what's going on with his veins, you know? And I go, he goes like, hell yeah, don't you? You're the same way, right? And I'm like, oh my God. You know, so he like would let me know that I was a little intense too, you know, I was like a little, a lot. I was a lot during my season. But, you know, I, I, I know it's not as spicy in my head. That was spicy. But the thing is like, he will let his persona known yeah. without, you know, what's going on. And I love that. I love that. But don't Jeff, say I'm going to lose. Can you do some more Jeff voices for us? Yes. <laughs> uh, I, all my impressions sound the same. What do you say? Wait, I'm on the big screen. Why am I being now? <laughs> Click this button. Give us um, something. Wow. I was like, um. I don't know. Nope. Don't Did you put get me the impression of Jeff of Jeff um, sitting on a pillow and giving out popcorn? Or, or how would Jeff say zapatos? <laughs> zapatos. <laughs> Here's the thing with the cushion, cushion though. That if you go back to my season, Jeff's stool was a height at the first episode, and then as the epi the season went along, it would get higher and higher and higher and higher. They would start putting like pieces of wood so he would i i maybe his back hurt or maybe he wanted to look taller i don't know but Jam, um you hit the head on the nail y'all y'all be ha, everyone at work has that seasoned co-worker who they can't sit at a regular chair, right? They got that little, like, damn, damn, uh -huh. home in the chair that they put that, like, arch day. That was Spicy Jeff trying to make a moment, but he needed that for his back. It was just fine. He needed a little cushion. <laughs> he was like, this is my moment so people don't, like, burn me because I'm putting a cushion on it. Those stools are had. I have my stool. I bought my stool that I had, where, what I think it is, around here. I will. I wish I had it in the room so I could show it. These are hard. They're hard. They're horrible. Yeah. I got wrong with you know. Little. I'm gonna figure but, out what impression I'm gonna make at, at a later moment. Feel enough. free to to jump in with it whenever. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff with a Y. <laughs> uh, but so we get into Ouch. the challenge. <laughs> but not nah, us. It's, it's, no, it's, it's, that's how it's unique pronounced with a Y. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Um. And so we get into the challenge. Uh, Jeff, the first station is balance beams. Kenzie struggles on the beams, uh, and her team loses along with you know Tiffany and Ben. So Jeff is immediately <laughs> wrong about uh, who's going out first. The next one is the rope bridge, and then they got to shoot balls onto these these uh, little ring hoops. How would uh, you do, Jack, with shooting balls onto a little ring hoop? I think I'd do pretty well. I was actually, while we were watching, I was wondering the lowest rung, if I would be tall enough to just jump up and put it on there. Because it didn't look that high up. Um, yeah, Jeff but, is 6'10". He'll just, like, sit them all up there. Boop. How yeah. would you do, Jam, putting the balls in the 
Oh gosh. The hoop. With the right words and the right lighting, amazing. <laughs> when DZ, we know you have a lot of experience with balls and hoops. How would you do managing all that rope and putting, would you be able to put up the balls in the hole? Um, that throw on a hunter hoodie. And that that looks twisted. sounds about winners at war. How you did? I smoked them. It was, that ah. damn, it was that damn puzzle that I couldn't do. I, that that <laughs> that ball in the hole puzzle that I couldn't do. You should have took that, more advice. Was that what? That's the one you have to come back, like your opportunity to come back. Yes, <laughs> potential to come back, Jim. <laughs> you know what? He made I, a blanket on X on Edge of Extinction. That's all that matters. He had yeah, a lot of time. He had a lot of time. I'm gonna send it to you, Jam. You could have it. I would love it. Oh Jam, my god! I have the whole. I have a whole crate from the Edge of Extinction with all of my stuff in it that I wrapped in plastic in the airport and shipped home, uh -huh. and I still haven't opened that thing. When are you gonna open it? Oh my god! I don't know, but it, it has my sneakers in it, which are my Kobe's that I wore out there. So I need those, but everything else can go. Can I tell you, Sandra? That? Sandra told me that like wash your clothes, everything. I was like, oh, what the smell and everything. I was like, no, it gets mold. Wash it. Don't be dirty. I, yeah. yeah, I still I I haven't washed my anything from Survivor. But see, Bryce, yours was really clean. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You washed it three days before you got home. <laughs> that was a good Die. one. Uh, uh, can I tell you a secret, Wendy's? Yes. You know, every time I come over your house, you know, I'll be like taking a little bit of the plastic off of that thing every time I come over. <laughs> the plastic off of what? Because it's his box. He has this box from Ghost Island. I mean, uh, from Winners at War that's like wrapped up in like cellophane. Airport plastic. Airport plastic. And so, you like, take a little bit off every so time. I'm taking a little bit off the top every time I come over. Just so eventually he has to go in there. Eventually it's just gonna be open. I'm gonna be like, what happened? And yeah, you move things around the last time I was over. I was oh my god. You know, coming at you, you're like, what are you doing in there? It's a little awkward. Here's the thing with, with the blanket on edge of extinction. Um, our final two, three days was on edge of extinction, or like in the new camp. That island is freaking cold. The wind like blows right in it, like the logs would last only a few hours was horrible and i was like is that's what is this where they were living they would not tell us until the last day that was like edge of extinction but it was so cold so bad so of course that blanket would have been amazing we took the tarp and we covered with the tarp but it was horrible 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 the wind the wind right in it the it's like a little triangle and where the mangrove they have like a little like where you're supposed to be you're not supposed to be there but that's like where they like set everything and then you're like whatever else to hear and the wind just came through the hallway, like right through the night. It was like it was like a, a alley of like a like a wind turbine or something. It was like, dude, it was so bad, bad. And then we cannot touch each other because you know of some season, so we could not get warm with each other. And oh, horrible, horrible, horrible. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so back to the challenge. Uh. Uh. Q's team now it, it struggles with the shooting portion. And so Charlie, Hunter, and Maria move on to the final three face-off, uh, which is sort of the classic survivor, like, crucifix situation almost with the cross. You got to hold on back against – and I think they made it harder. I forget exactly what Jeff said, but I think he said you can't really take your back off of the pole. You can't, like, crouch down. So you really got to just, like, hold the position – uh, and it goes for about 10 minutes, and Charlie outlasts Hunter and pulls out a big win. I also Amazing. feel like Hunter is definitely watching uh, Survivor News because you heard him up there. He says something about it's like the Hunter versus the Hunty uh, when he was standing on there. And you can best believe that I am the Hunty. Come, Hunt me 
Right. It's plural, hunties. You need another hunties. Uh, hunty. Is okay. that four couple, or is that two? A couple of hunties. <laughs> uh, hunties, okay. I'm not Jam a hunty, so it's always Yes, you are. Wendell for sure is a hunty. Three hunties in here. Hunter, so, come get your doves. The only thing I will say, Bryce, <laughs> is... <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> okay. like is that your Jeff I'm more like a turkey. I'm more like a turkey. <laughs> Who yeah, when he get mad. And Bryce on a podcast together. This is bad. Yes, Hunter. Okay, you got a turkey and a dog. <laughs> 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 oh, it's all right. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> Oh, he laughed. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna be like a real promo. I know it. Oh. <laughs> and, oh my god. Oh, 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 okay, sorry. <laughs> Y'all talking about <laughs> there you go. There you go. Get it okay, in. Get it in. You we, want we, it. We, he's no. definitely yes. a pigeon. Now, um, my only question is, did you say Hunter watches Survivor News so he knew that you were a dove? And that's why he said it on the show that he recorded eight months ago? Because he's he seen it in the basement. <laughs> in the basement. He's seen it in the basement. You know he has a basement and he goes watch Survivor there. Yeah. Oh, he puts this on in the background while he builds, builds puzzles. Builds his puzzles. Uh, yeah. I will have to say, first of all, us being at Chicago State University, and it being a PBI, uh, a PBI, a PBI? Per predominantly Perdomo. black institution, oh, um, and watching with a bunch of black students that have never seen Survivor, and one, because first of all, like, We've all, I've watched Survivor with Jam, I've watched Survivor with Jack, I've watched Survivor with Wendell. With Wendell. Y'all know how I am when I watch Survivor. I got to turn and ask questions. I'm like, what's happening? And so me, I, first of all, I don't know how I got back there with the track and the basketball squad, but I was there. You don't know? You don't I, know how you got back there. <laughs> it was just a coincidence. No, Oops. Oops. Wait, <laughs> also Jack, wait, sidebar Jack. We almost had a moment. <laughs> so Wendell and I are hosting uh, and we're like talking to the audience and we like kick off a video to Jeff and Jeff is like shouting us out. Then we go back to our seats that we saved, Jack. Yeah. Whoa, Jack. <laughs> Let me tell. Dude, I have PTSD from this. We jam in New Orleans at the RHAP event. We had an incident where someone sat in Bryce's seat. They overreacted. Bruce. Wow. So me and Jack sat down. We're like, oh, Bruce took Bryce's seat. We can't do nothing about it. Because Bruce, at that point, you can't say nothing to Bruce. He was with, he was with the cast, too. And he they was the last seat for that. Sat down. So Bryce sat elsewhere, and he was mad at me the whole night. He was fuming, so mad at me. And we should have just got up and sat with Bryce, right? So now, after we're on stage and we do our little whatever, and we come down, I noticed somebody is in, and we put two Q skirts to save our seats. Similarly to uh, New Orleans. We're, but, we're past New Orleans, but, right, <laughs> but what, 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 what is funny though is I am back there with the basketball and the track team and <laughs> all throughout the episode, Wendell is like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> do you you want some? I got some cookies. Do you want some? Do you want to do? I'm like I'm good. Bryce I'm is good. like I'm great. <laughs> but, of course. So, so I'm back there with the basketball and the track squad. And again, what I find so amazing is people that have never really watched Survivor. I love the fact that being in an audience with Survivor fans, like one, they're automatically like. Why the hell are they cheering at the screen? And then it's like because it's the basketball squad and the stuff. Like at this challenge, they like, I could, I could, I could walk across a balance <laughs> beam. And I'm like, oh, really? Then they like, I, I could hold the ball. But I was dying when it got to the end, and they started showing the toes. Like they was like, oh no, no, <laughs> like count us out, count us out. But again, shout out to. 
the Chicago State, Ch Chicago State University, and all of the students that came because the interest after the show and after everything was a thousand percent there. And I think what is more important with the Survivor Initiative, um, the Diversity Initiative, it's like, and one, there were some characters and funny people, and it's like they like I could do this. I'm like, oh, you first of all, I turned into Jeff. So you think you can do it? <laughs> CBS.com and casting. We want to see you. Like, you couldn't tell me I wasn't Jeff because the way that I was like telling these people to like, y'all would be great. But it was just funny seeing clearly these athletic students, but like seeing the challenge, like that ain't nothing. Like, but okay. But do that out there for 13 days. No pooping in. Oh, that was another thing. They could not take aqua dumping and you know i had to explain a good old aqua dump yeah. and they was like so you poop in the water that you eat the fish out of <laughs> it is an ocean. It. <laughs> i was like yeah the window was like you, sometimes you gotta dodge them like <laughs> what, well, first of all what dumps were you die not window dodging his own dumps boop, 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 boop. Ooh. Bryce was out there so short he didn't even have to take an aqua dump. <laughs> You're right though. I tried though. I really did. I what I, I wanted to experience. I was so mad. My body You can still it. aqua dump anywhere. I, well, <laughs> that is true. I got that is fun I've done it. I've done I've done it after. <laughs> wait, okay, wait. There's a lot to unpack here. Time out, Jim. <laughs> How do you know that it's fun, Jack? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> How do you know that it's fun? No, I was gonna say it was. It's fun that you, that you've hosted this event and maybe. Ah, uh -uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no it's fun to aqua dump. Jack. No, I've never aqua dumped. Oh, Jack, and a posse, get that timestamp that Jack said that because we know what he said. Now what? wait, now pause. I'm you. sure it is fun. That's not what I was saying, but I, I would love, I would love to have the privilege of aqua dumping. Okay, pause you on that. Jamil, when is the last time that you've aqua dumped? <laughs> I aqua dump. We came back in July 1st and I aqua dumped twice. Like when we came back, like August and maybe September. Here's the thing in Puerto Rico, you have beaches obviously in the hotel areas, but you also have beaches that are very, very far away. So before I would like, you know, keep it in. I was like, I've done this. I've done it. I don't need to like, I'm sorry, Wendell, but you don't need like to be like, if it makes you feel better, I would go into the deep and go and nobody knows. Nobody knows. Some poor little person or a town in Puerto Rico <laughs> was swimming in the whole shit. <laughs> they said, oh, is that a fish? <laughs> 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 Is that a chocolate? It's bar? a brown trout. <laughs> Ooh, who put this Hershey bar here? You guys are from the city. You don't get it. I also did it when I was a little kid and my teens. Like that's like it's not common. I'm not gonna say that everybody does it, but yeah, when you, yeah. Why suffer when you can? Yeah, I, that was dumb. I'm not mad. I was I, gonna say it's it's cool that hosting this. It's always so fun seeing it. A new like a, a friend for, watch Survivor for the first time and have all these reactions, but yeah. it's cool that you're showing at a a PBI and uh, the kids are getting into it. It's like maybe it, what a story would be like one of those kids went on one day and they're like, Amazing. I first watched it at the Bryson Wen hosted event. Uh, I, I'm hoping yeah. that 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 shakes out. But um, what's crazy, Jack, is that afterwards they had two um, media communications majors sitting up there and there was a panel of discussion they asked Bryce myself and Jatia about you know just what's been going on in the diversity initiative and those things and uh the one guy I believe his name is Pierce um he then he came to our event yesterday and, and he was in there like really enjoying it and stuff and I'm looking at this guy and I'm like man like you would be good out there so can all right I'm gonna tell y'all a secret <laughs> So again, he was having so much fun at the party. Well, first he was like by himself and he didn't kind of like, you know, and so I was like, one thing at a Bryson Wynn event, you can come by yourself, but you're gonna leave with friends. I found him a tribe. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you can come with, alone and live with Bryson. <laughs> 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 
thought you were gonna say that. Sorry. <laughs> no, that <too. laughs> no, no. So I found him a tribe, and by the end of the night. Pierce was too cool. Pierce was like, you, he was up in there. And so I have this guilty, like, so was then. Keenan his tribe? So Keenan's friend was his tribe. And so, like, they actually, like, I want them to say that they were in the uh, same fraternity or something. But anyway, uh, because he was hanging with us so much and people was like, who is that? And I was like, 37. <laughs> and so. 37. 47. I'll say 47. And so David by the end, Goliath. For, for the, did you say David is versus that Goliath? David? <laughs> <laughs> Where is David? Oh. <laughs> Jack, did you say David versus Goliath? Goliath. Oh, I thought you said season no. 47, David versus Goliath. Season 37. Uh yes. Which one? Wait. No, that's that's not even either. Oh, he's back in the back. Uh wait, I have a better picture of him. But yeah. mind you, so I started telling people, people were asking me, and I was like, season 47. You better pull but, up a picture of him edited with a buff on the beach or something. When I tell y'all by the end of the night, so this is Pierce right here, uh, in the middle. When I tell y'all by the end of the night, people were lining up to take photos. No. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Oh, you were like, they believed that's it. Amazing. Well, oh, I just amazing. said it at Jess because it was like in a back, like we had two rooms. And so then I left because, you know, I had to go outside because I was sweating. But when I came back in, there were four people. <laughs> You're such a mess. Uh, I mean, hey, we've, we've been in that position it, many times. 48. <laughs> 50. Whoa. Jam, see you out there. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Jack, see you here. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um. Anyways, Charlie wins the challenge. Shout A out great to performance. Um, I was rooting for him too, cause like, yeah, Hunter is a challenge beast, so it's good mm. to see the underdogs get one. Yeah. Charlie did, you know, D1 track and feet, like D1 cross country at Harvard. So he's he's an athlete in his own right. But obviously, do Hunter's they, a beast. Do they read while they run at Harvard? <laughs> yeah. They listen to books <laughs> on T. Because, um, <laughs> you know, everything is smart over there. I don't know. Do you? Yeah. Are, well, are they going to run into things during <laughs> cross country while reading? Also, weird tidbit. Um, Charlie... Janine Zhang from 43 and Jay Maya from 45, all in the same graduating class at Harvard. Oh. Which I thought was kind of crazy. Janine so they all kind of knew each other. Wow. And Jay, yeah. wow. Smart but so we get back to camp. It's not Harvard, but we <laughs> get back to camp. Um, and we kind of talked about it already. Um, because of the clear target on Q and on Hunter – this plan emerges to maybe take out Tiff, but then Charlie goes and sort of takes a temperature check with Tiff, and she's like, "I need to get rid of this idol. It's it, it's weighing me down. I'm gonna play it." And so that, and I think great move by Tiff because we see how it all shakes out. But because of that, they need to pivot. They're worried about you know Tiff playing this idol because it sounds like she's going to, and now the target shifts more towards Hunter or potentially Q. But then last minute. Hunter is, goes to Q and then to Venus and Liz is like, hey, I'm playing my idol. Uh, let's switch it up. Maybe vote for Ben. Then there's some last minute scrambling for Q. And then this whole slew of chaos ensues. Uh, I guess the central sort of thing at this strategically going in this tribal is this idol usage, this idol bluffing. But there's a lot of chaos, and so what stuck out to you guys really? I, I, anything that I, of anything that that really st stood out to you uh, going into this tribal, uh, which obviously the tribal itself is also crazy. So there's a lot to talk about here. It was a pretty mess. <clears throat> it was horrible. I was like, everybody was like, I and everybody should talk to everybody. I, I remember talking to everyone about everything. But that was like the game I had to play at the moment. It's not like I would do it again. But um, uh, 
I was so like trying to make notes for this podcast, like watching going back and forth. I was like, oh my God, what they're trying to do to me as a viewer? Uh, is it really what's going on? Was it like, what are they trying to like, I don't know, what's the mess? I got so, I got mad at them as a player. I was like, yeah, why is everybody just telling everybody what they're going to do? Just, you know, say it. Again, nobody has a number a number one, only Charlie and Maria right now. And so it makes sense it was a mess, but I... And then I didn't know why they split the way they split. Like I got confused and maybe I should have called one of you before coming here to talk about it. But yeah, I was like mad as a player. I don't know. I didn't like. As a fan, it's the first time all season I was pissed at Hunter because I'm like, we've done all of this simulation in the basement and we're like, I just was so upset and pissed off at Hunter. I'm over here flying around, talk about cat, like, you know, talk about get me and they out here getting you. How you going to hunt me if the, if they didn't hunt you? But I just the felt like <laughs> it's not the food chain. I understand in this situation where it's like, if I could have my idol for another day, mm -hmm. let me bring it with me. But the point is to get to another day and you know that you are a big strong oh gosh you know country man built <laughs> you know long hair it ain't a tree you can't climb it ain't a chair you can't build it ain't a puzzle you can't piece together it ain't a pole you can't bend off of it ain't a you can't hunt mm -hmm. <laughs> Preach. But <laughs> when it's an idol in your pants. Whoa. Or pocket. Okay. Like I just, I, I, again, I understand because here's the thing. I have that same energy for my girl, Tiffany. Why y'all playing Russian roulette? But Tiff did it right. No, I mean, but just, it just so happens. She, she did it right. But baby, like, this ain't we're not playing strip tease. I don't want to be butt butt behind naked. I want my clothes on. So I'd rather have my idol. So again, I understand, but I really feel like we got to see Hunter's blind spot. And again, he's an excellent player, a handsome man, a strong man, uh, a country born and bred, uh, smart, talented, all right, all right. funny. <laughs> Little on the quiet side, but we like it. But I like, in my opinion, there's a reason why he worked with Tevin, not just because of Tevin's personality. I think that they complemented each other really well. And I think with Tevin going, we got to see that, like, although mm -hmm. Hunter knows the game, he's not about to, like, mm -hmm. really carve it up. Right. Yeah. My take on the situation, I have a lot of thoughts, so I'll, I'll just spill them. And if you guys hear something that you like disagree with or whatever, feel free to interject. I think, right, at first, when you, when you know the heat's on you, it's obviously you want to play your idol. I think going to a Q, who at this point might be Hunter's closer ally, I don't mind it. Get one person on side with you. and Because, right, you play the idol successfully and negate a lot of votes. Sure, that works for the tribal, but you do need to make some inroads to move forward with. Uh, the problem I think here is when he goes to Venus and Liz and then tries to orchestrate this other whole plan. It's like, man, if you're going to use your idol to make a blind side, you can't all of a sudden loop in mm -hmm. three, four people, right? You're, you're sort of, you're sort of in between like, can I, am I going to play my idol or am I trying to like orchestrate a plan where I don't have to play my idol, but now I'm going to people that I don't really trust. And I think that's where he went kind of wrong. But I can understand why he did it, right? Then he gets to the tribal, and I don't hate the way he plays it initially, right? Kenzie's given him a lot of, of comfort. Uh, Charlie does a great do job of consoling him. I don't mind the gamble of not playing it necessarily because Hunter's a big target. Uh, if you If you have to play it now, it's sort of like you're probably not going to make it a lot farther, right? You need to kind of trust that you have some numbers. Granted, with how wide open the game is, playing it now, becoming the obvious target, nobody seems to want to go for the obvious target, and you're an immunity threat, maybe it's safer to play it now. What I think, my hot take here, 
and this is something we've never really seen before, is once the vote is split evenly and the vote ties and then go to a revote and people know that Hunter <laughs> most likely has an idol, I think you take the idol and you throw it in the fire and you say, guys, I know right now it's between me and Q. I could see why you would lean more towards me because I do have this idol. Pull it out and say, but hey, I, hold on, Bryce. <laughs> and, and say, hey, I know that the idol might be the reason that you guys lean towards voting me. But I think without the idol, I'm a more consistent ally. I'm a, I'm a more steady presence. Uh, so you take the idol and say, okay, if we're, if we're about to revote, let me get rid of this. Because the only thing that matters to survive is that revote. So just get rid of the idol. It's that weight on your shoulders. And I think maybe he gets rid of the idol. People are like, all right, he got rid of his ammunition. Q is unpredictable. Hunter's cool. And now he doesn't have an idol. Maybe we revote to keep Hunter. Because also, if you think about it, or no, that wouldn't be the case. But anyways, uh, I, think I, think the, I think there's a case to be made for just throwing the idol in the fire once you once you mess up by not using it. I think it's very easy for us to think of these plans after or like, you know, after we've dissected things. But I think when you're in the heat of the moment, I don't think Hunter's thinking about that. I think at best wow, you might yeah. think I think at best you might think, all right, I got to do a little politicking real quick or something like let's let's jump up and shake this and make it a live travel. But. I think it is a cool, it's a good idea to uh, it's a good last ditch effort to minimize your threat by burning your idol. But I just don't think that I think it would take quite the player to just think that up on the fly and just do it. Yeah, I'm not but, saying that was like the clear cut. Like I'm not saying oh Hunter's dumb he didn't do that. Like it, that would be a, a bigger play. Where I'm more so curious, like would that be the right move? I think that oh, it would. I, I, think, I think it's I think it's a good move in in that it's like all right you have you got to do something drastic right now and. It's like throw everything at the wall. But I think making it a live tribal, at least you could give your pitch to people. But what I wanted to say, um, I think the editors did a real good job at showing Hunter and like helping us like just watch him like try to mentally think like, are these people with me? Are they not? And I think they were seated. I think they were seated where people that were not lying to him were sitting next to him. And I'm like, either Kenzie is the best liar I have ever seen or she's with him. Or yeah. like I, I remember saying that about a couple of like they look locked and loaded with him. And so they're assuring him while these other people are just maybe nodding with him or whatever. Mm. But the people that are locked with him are right there next to him. And you're seeing him go through <clears> it. <throat> and now we're like, all right, should he play? Should he not? What's going to happen? I think uh, I just think they did a good job at that. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, it's it's tough, and I, and I feel like I heard someone say he sort of puts himself in a position now with all this info out there, where if he plays it and he's wrong, he looks bad. If he doesn't play it and he's wrong, he looks bad and he goes home. You sort of put yourself in the position where you have to make the perfect move here and the perfect read, and that's a really difficult thing. So I I, I do think once. I think we reached a point on the beach where Hunter's like, you know what? The heat's on me. I got to play my idol. And I understand wanting to take that move and start trying to add a couple branches off of that to go forward with. But I think once he does that, now he's in a limbo of like, well, did I actually swing the vote? Whatever. I think you just got to play it and try to set something up with like a cue or just create some chaos. Take out like, I guess a Ben is not a terrible <laughs> idea, but even like uh Maria or a Charlie who's super well connected um, could open the game up more. And I think Hunter has the advantage of, like I said, being a challenge threat and the idol is going to be rehidden most likely. Uh, and so you, there's a lot of life left in the game rather than, I guess if you boil it down, even call it a 50, 50, I'd rather just get, use the idol, not risk that 50, 50. And then maybe the game opens up going forward. You got to play it. I think you got to play it. Big mistake that he didn't. He should have. He should have played it, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't show what happened between the tie and the revote because they normally show, like, them talking again or, like, at least discussing. Um, probably there was no progress unless they change the rules and you cannot talk because, yeah, obviously he didn't play the idol on the second revote because if you didn't play on the first one, you cannot play it on the second one. But... Um, uh, I was I missed what they talk about after the if they if it happened I don't know I haven't asked them. 
I want to throw out like a, a ge- more like a general question of you know in the new era, I think we've seen a lot more people get blindsided with idols than you know play an idol successfully. And of course, in the shoes of like a hunter or a gem who went home with an idol earlier this season, it's hard to know when to play it. As as p- players that have played, and if you have an idol, what are some like rules of thumb? going into a tribal where it's like, hey, maybe I should just play this idol from your experience. In my season, when they they play an idol twice while I was um, on tribal, like they play, Brandon played one at the first episode and that's why he stayed because he was mm-hmm. apparently going out. Um, and that's when Maddie left and I love Maddie. Um, but it's, Knowing and having the conversations with the people that you trust the most. Um, in my case, Carolyn didn't tell us she was she had an idol, but I had like if anybody has it, it's her. And the way she would ask me about what's going on, what's going on, let me know if I can do something. Like you have a little insight of what's going on. Um, just have to ask around what some people mind all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. So when in a tribal council they change target and it's being hidden from you, you know what people were thinking. Like it's a weird thing, you. But you have to have information constantly and be checking in with everybody, and just have the little tingly inside that tells you, wait, there's something going on that I don't know. And when Carolyn used the idol to save Carson, was like the moment when in our game final six was like this is the moment that the other three can get together and vote us out after this we got the game we get we get into the end so carolyn if you have something and she knew she was like confirming with me like if you have something this is the moment afterwards it doesn't matter we don't need it this is the moment and then on the case with heidi she was like i'm gonna use it till the moment i can because i want to get to the final episode and then she didn't get any votes but it depends on each case but you just have to keep like you know that little bit like be like touching everybody and like breathing and watching them and doing the scrambling and I, it's weird every every it's there's no way there's not like a one rule in my opinion but i don't know i won ah, would you say that because I, th- I think there's a lot of times where we see it's sort of a situation where you do know that it's probably you or someone else and we see players I mean, not to bring up the great Chris Noble, but when he went out with an idol, he knew it was going to be him or Dom. And for me, I think, you know, having not played, my rule of thumb would sort might sort of might be seeing how often idols get misplayed. If you know you're catching votes and it's going to be you or someone else, you might as well play it and move forward. But of course, you might get a read. Like we saw Hunter when uh, Tim went out, did correctly hold his idol, but... You know, trying to do that every time really puts yourself in a in a dicey spot. Uh, it's it's better use it, not need it, than need it and not use it. Right. Exactly. And that's and that's and that's the thing. Like people are very like going back to like everybody want to make a big move. Everybody's like saving their idol to make a big move. And sometimes the boring move, the save move, is the one that benefits you the most. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're like, you know. Because these people are fans. These are not people that just like got recruited to go on to Survivor and they're like, I just want to survive one day. I'll just use it. I'll just use it. I'll get another one. Um, these are people that are like, oh my God, this is going to be compared to to whoever and this and that. And this is what I'm going to do. And this is what I'm going to play. And that clouds their judgment. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they desire to do something crazy. I mean, that happens a lot with like extra votes and like steel votes too. Is like people hold on to them because they want to make the perfect move. But sometimes that never happens and then you 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 don't use it when it could have worked for you right as james jones preaches <laughs> okay <laughs> you got to get to the end to win hello and it's it, and <laughs> james jones <laughs> i can't tell you how many times i have been forced to hear james jones say that but it's true and also James Jones also says, like, it's not how you get to the end, but it's about the story that you could tell in the end. Mm-hmm. Shout out to James Jones. Before we wrap this podcast up, though, I really want to touch on two things. One, justice for Dr. Maria. Uh, what's up? With like what like hello, editors. My girl is out there, and clearly she's a boss. Clearly, she is moving and shaking. Why are we not seeing her? Yep. I feel like get it together. 
I, I, I feel like I've seen some Maria. I get, not yeah, as much. And like we, confessional wise, definitely not. But she's always in the mix. Like she's, she's a in the mix. And it's like we know from part one of season 46, she's a mover and a shaker. Uh, and so it's like we know that she has to be moving and shaking behind the scenes. Uh, but I think she and Charlie are like. Yeah, but we're just hearing we're just the, seeing the Charlie's in side. And I don't get me wrong, yeah. I love me some Charlie. Okay, he could shake it off all day with me. Like, you know, but I want to see more Dr. Maria. Also, sure. number two, um, shout out to my baby boy Ben. We haven't been seeing a lot of him. However, he was so funny this episode. However, wow. uh, right, but at tribal, uh 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 turn it on. Benjamin, no Ben, uh Benjamin. Stood on business and was letting cute know about himself. Now, mind you, he didn't make no eye contact and look straight at Jeff. But Ben said what he said and what did not rock. And so I, uh, you know, I just I love I love yeah. Ben. I, I love Ben. I it's like he's the chillest one, but when there's some BS going down, he's not afraid to call it out. Even his confessional at the beginning, just calling out Q, like you it's like I saw someone say it's sort of like you know when, like, the quiet kid in class tells you you're, like, he's, like, over your shit. You're, like, oh, I really got it. Like, I, I, you're, you're really messed up now. Like, the nice kid in class is telling you you're, you're white. But, that, that's a crazy comparison. But, like, I get it. But that's... Uh, well, who's Q in class? <clears throat> it's, like the, it's, like, the class clown that keeps, like, yelling. It, it's, like... And they're joking around, and it's funny, but then it's too much, and the teacher's getting mad. And then the kid who – the kid's like – Ben's like the kid who's like, hey, we're trying to learn here. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've had enough of this. Go to timeout, man. <laughs> Could you imagine Q, uh, <laughs> fifth grade, and a spelling bee? <laughs> <laughs> what is he spelling? <laughs> Spell cat. C. <laughs> A. I'm no, you gotta out. you gotta repeat the first letter. Yeah, I'm gonna sit out. I, I I'm gonna sit out. I, 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 want, I want Jack to have it. I want Jack to have it. Oh my God, cute. Oh, I, Bryce, I got it. Bryce, cute, cute. I got it. I got it. Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you sit out, cute? I wanted Jack to have it, but I knew how to spell cat. C A T. C A T. Um, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Okay, sorry. <laughs> y'all know Q in fifth grade got sent to the principal's office for the Q skirt before it was the Q skirt. Okay. Uh, anyway. He was trying to like sell people like, Q skirts in the hallway. <laughs> like, I'm going to be on TV selling these one day. <laughs> Take it off, Q. Big mistake, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Brown. Big mistake. Your parents going to cancel Christmas, Q. <laughs> <laughs> um, take home right in that the headlines of the paper. So last last question, I guess. Going, it's about to be the final eight. Who do we think is going to win? It's well, a crazy, it, it's a tough, tough question. Grabs. I think the better question is, Who's not gonna win? Who's not gonna win? I got three <laughs> right away. Y'all are cold. <laughs> I had a I had a premonition last night that oh. Ben was gonna win this season. So I'm that and that's fine. a dark horse. I, I don't know how, I don't know why, but I, I had a dream that it was Ben winning Survivor. So I, maybe it's because he's in LA this week and I could just sense the the Benergy, but uh, uh Ooh, the Benergy. The Benergy. I just came up with that too. So, no, oh, but so we I, have... I don't know. There's there's so many, like, right. I think we could say probably Venus, Liz, and Q, unlikely candidates. Unlikely. Uh... I mean, they all, they can all sit next to each other. Um, I don't Charlie know. And Mar Charlie, Maria, and it, I think it, Charlie, Maria, Kenzie, and Tiff all could win. And, and then, then I think Ben, that's my dark horse. But, all right. As Let's... much as I want my girl Tiffany to win, uh, and I am rooting for her, I feel like her path 
at this point, it's, it, it's, it's a, a little rocky. It's a hard road. Not to say that she can't get to the end, but it's like she has so many ops that she don't even know mm -hmm. are ops because she Drake right now and Q is Metro booming. Kenzie is the weekend. <laughs> Dr. Maria is Kendrick. <laughs> Kendrick. Charlie is Rick, Rick Ross. Ross. Okay. <laughs> Charlie's T Swift, <laughs> but but for real, um, if we're looking at these people and let's name those people that you just said, you got Charlie, Maria, Tiffany, Kenzie, Ben. Yeah, I think a Sieg is gonna win, um, but Kenzie, I I agree with Bryce about Tiff. I think she's just for through really no fault of her own is just in a messy spot. That's what happens when Q's your number one. Not a messy spot though, because I just I do really well not because like of her, but she's right. just in a she's just in a tough spot. Like when you are a loyal, solid, and down yeah. to earth, and like it's like they just turn on you, and it's just like mm, that just kind of pisses me off about Tiff's game because it's like what has she really done wrong? Okay, but here's sure. my question: Is there a world where? People know that Kenzie has turned on her. She hates Q. Now she flips on everybody. And she goes with. Well, she still has her idol. So anyone else. she's got some wiggle room. I mean, they, I don't know. Can they use this Kenzie flip on her to get. To say, say Tiffany used their idol. This She's going to use her idol next episode. She's going to get through. Now it's like y'all pick off someone and. Someone could be like, yo, Kenzie was going for you. Do they think that Kenzie's a threat out there? I feel like there will be a point when these people yeah. are like, yo, Kenzie is a threat. And Hunter going, mm -hmm. Kenzie loses a little bit. I just think Kenzie's very well connected. But I do agree with you that that could be a good flip. I also think, I've seen, especially in the new era, we've seen a lot where a public idol could actually be a real asset. Because now Tiffany's shown she, she has the cojones to bluff about a idol and not use it and so now everyone's gonna be like we can't read tiff like we don't know if she's gonna play her idol or not she's kind of dialed in when it comes to is she safe or is she not maybe we just put tiff on the back burner for a little bit but before you know it the back burner becomes the final five and she still has her idol um it is just a tough path to sort of see how tiff maneuvers votes and also leads enough votes eventually to win the game but i mean when when what do you what do you guys think about like the C, the three Seagas is that that to me is the the strongest. It's sort of like Reba last season, where there is a sort of a, a closeness there, and there's some loyalty there. But what's yeah, yeah? They they look, I like I, I like the Seagas. Yeah, they look good. I'm sorry, Maria looks good. Charlie and Maria look good, and we've gotten their narrative the whole time. Again, Maria's been under edited. Could that be because she's about to get a big spike in her edit? Could that be because mm, that's what I think. Like, She's about to hit that sweet spot and like go and go and go, you know. So yeah. Who knows? I agree. I agree. I think I think the Seagas are definitely like in the best spot right now because they are playing. They are not a target. They are like I know they talk about Ben being the target, but they're like just chilling and aware and connected, not causing a lot of ruckus, whatever the word is. And but I do see people that I think going back to the question of who I think is going to win or go to the end and blah, blah, blah. I think the best path so far to get to the end, in my opinion, definitely can see because in this messy Yanu thing, she's the one that has a less of a target so far, a lot of connections. I think she can make it and then she can have a good argument at the end. Um, I think the way Maria is edited, just like Wendell said right now, I was thinking about that too. Um, they're giving us a glimpse of her playing without it making a big thing with the other players. So I think there's something there that they're showing little tidbits of something she's going to maybe expand on later or something that's going to happen. And I also think Ben is a very likable person. And I don't think, I mean, they they still are looking at other targets and i think ben can go through it because ben hasn't won a challenge ben is cool ben is chilling ben is not playing mm -hmm. but he's playing you know but maybe they notice um i know i don't want to make it all about myself but it's very important to know that these people watch my finale two days before they went to uh -huh. fiji it's just like us we watched marianne win a day before we went to fiji so they have 44 in their head, you know, 
So that's like Soda left, Tevin left, like big, happy personalities. Um, they don't want 44 to happen again. They're playing that anti-44 game um, in my head. Is the way I'm seeing what's going on. Um, but, yeah, maybe and they see it in Ben and they want to kick him out because of that too. I don't know. But that also is like you saying that, Jam, in my opinion, makes more sense to uh, Kenzie's move targeting Tiff. Right, like if they just saw the Tinka three get to the end, maybe she is trying to like break that curse, not break the curse, but like stand alone. I also feel like it's more important for me. I'm watching this jewelry. We've got soda, we got Tevin, we now have Hunter. Like, I feel like a lot of Nami's, right? So, well. Oh, sorry. I, I feel like they would go. I, I feel like if uh what's the green tribe's name? Sega. Sega. Like I feel like I don't know if they want a Sega to win. Uh so I don't know. I'm just thinking but, about but they don't want Venus. Well, I mean they don't yeah, want Venus or Liz right, to win. I don't that's think that's what I'm saying. So it's like oh I'm looking at who is left and seeing like what the projection the what the trajectory of who actually this jury would vote for? Because another thing, shout out to Tevin, baby, he ain't look happy. So mm -hmm. let's let's look at it with that eye, then, Bryce. Because now you got, we could just look at, we could take our top five, and we could say, who is this voting block not going to vote for out of that? And that's why I'm saying, like, if Tip or Kenzie, with who is out there. If they get to the end, I could see them winning because it's like being as though that they are the three, like. Siga in what's the other tribe name? Nami. Yanu, Nami. Yan, Nami. Like, I don't think they're really coming for them. That's it's like for me, it's more yeah. if, if it's a Nami or a Yanu or a Siga up there, I feel like that is going to be like where they're like, we ain't. Uh, but yeah. that's sort of where Yanu squandered a lot of their advantages. They all split up now. So they, I think they t like sort of had some Tika three potential where they play both sides and get in good with everybody. Mm -hmm. But it's like now they don't even like each other really. And even Kenzie and mm -hmm. Tiff were tight, and then Kenzie wants to turn on Tiff. Um, that's why I think with this jury especially, I think we're about to see a, a bitter jury. Uh, and I'm not mad at it. And I think yeah. not only are some of the people that have gone out uh, not super happy with the way they went out, but we also have players like a Venus, players like a Q, players like Tiff, who is mad at Q. Players in Yanu who are going against each other, and there's so many players going against each other, so many conflicts I feel like that we're still yet to see. That by the time we reach the final three, that's why I think maybe a guy like Ben or a guy or Maria or Charlie who really have made no enemies with anybody and are very likable people, if they just sit next to people that people don't like, that's sort of how you get that uh Bob Crowley win. That's sort of how you get like uh, hey, put some more respect. On Bob well, that's Crowley. but that's not a disrespect. That's I mean, more I of know. like a that's I mean, not a disrespect. That's you maneuver your way to the end with people that the jury doesn't want to vote for, which is kind of a clear cut strategy to win. Kind of like Fabio Nicaragua, like just. But it don't it don't say I don't like the way you sound no. <laughs> Look, but it, I'd like let's be if Ben ends up winning this season, it's probably not going to be because he turned on the mastermind strategic moves in the final eight it's going to be because he positions himself in a way to get to the end with like venus in q and everyone's like well we really like ben we not huge fans of q or venus so we're gonna vote for ben and you win a million dollars and that's that's a good deal in, in my mind yeah i uh regardless if i'm out there i'm not letting q get to the end uh because y'all need to take you out because again being yeah. around Q, seeing him actually in person, and like you know, and even in this tribal, Tiffany still didn't even write his name down. That she still went with Hunter. Like I just, yeah, like y'all keep saying Tony from Cagnan. There is a world where people may not like what he has done, but he gonna get up there and say he ran for president. He flew a helicopter. He can fly. But does the jury believe all I, that? But, That's the but, question. But, but again, I like on the upside, yeah, like I'm saying, Jack, you're saying a bitter, you're saying a bitter jewelry, but also uh, for me, a bitter jewelry means an emotional jewelry. And, yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying that yeah, negatively. I'm not. Yeah, saying yeah. So it. right. So yeah, put him with Venus and Liz at the end. I mean, I don't know because I, I don't know because Mother eats. 
Mother eats. I don't he know. He probably wins that final three, but I think that's the only final three that he wins. Yeah, it's say if that is the final three, Q will win the game, but baby Venus would skyrocket to a Kelly Wentworth, to a Parv, to a like what? you know that. <laughs> You well, know that's that. Venus is already on the trajectory, I think, to be a losing finalist. And that's not going to put her in the conversation with Parv and Kelly Wentworth. But, I, Jack, I mean, do, do you not know how these things work? Like, there's all these... Oh, like, in, terms of, in terms of mother status or in terms of survivor gamesmanship? In terms of mother status with the... Oh, the, the oh yeah. No, she's already up there in in, uh, in alleged mother status. I, I, I can't question that. That's not mine. I thought you were talking about... If she goes to the end and doesn't win, she'd be as good of a player as Parvati or Kelly Wentworth. I was like, no, but maybe um... the, the stands are standing. No, Venus is great TV, and I, I can see why people stand her. Sorry, I misinterpreted okay, the status. Okay, another one for you: Q, Venus, Ben, Ben. I think. Ben. I think. I think. I think Q has an argument though, and he might get some votes. Yeah, Actually, because yeah. But I, nobody's I, like nobody messes with Q. <laughs> like yeah, right now, he, bro. Q. Okay, in real life, this man is on it. He's very successful. He does his thing. Don't I disagree. I, I've seen him on the phone, like making his deals. His phone's ringing off the hook, and I'm like, yo, I I see that person like the way he talks on the island. I'm like, yo, I've seen him talk to people like this on his business calls. Now, the only thing I'm saying is, I will not put anything past Q sitting at the end. I think that this man is a lot I, – I think he has the ability to – okay, he tried to quit. He he woke up on the island still, snapped back in. All right, I want to play again. I think that if he lands at the end, he's going to snap back in and he's going to make a very – It would be fun to watch him at Final Travel. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I just don't Definitely. think – Definitely, he'll be fun. I don't yeah. think a Tiff is voting for him. I don't think a – You'd be surprised. Venus is voting for him. I don't think – He'll get up there and say he's the he is one of seventeen. But saying one thing does not. You could say you masterminded everything, but that doesn't make it true. Yeah, you have to but have he evidence. Could, he could bring. Mind you, I, I don't think it could happen. But I'm just saying, like there is evidence that he could say everything that he's going to do. Talk about his upbringing. Be being one of seventeen. Sure, I would love to see him at like, final. You know, he go, he will give us. Yeah, no, no. I would love. I mean, him. That would be a wild final try. Like him, Venus, and Ben would be a competitive, chaotic, messy final tribal. And I would be curious to see that. And Q has shifted the game numerous times. Kind of. Q has, Q has directed the trajectory of the game numerous times. But I'm curious no, to see no, if he can really I, do I that again at this point in the game. Q has not directed the trajectory of the game. Q put the game in a blender and press <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the game look like right now. He ain't changed no direction. <laughs> Are we still playing Survivor? <laughs> he this is Q Viver. He put the Q Viver. Oh my god. Don't ever say Q Viver again. <laughs> Q Viver. Yes. What is but... not Survivor? It's Q Viver. It's Q Viver. Mm. But Jam, we thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy. Oh my God, to thank come you on the podcast with us, uh, Jack. As always, thank you so much, Wendizi. You're the best. We will see everyone in Boston on May eighth. Then the following Wednesday, you will see Wendell, myself, and Jam in Philadelphia with a few surprises. And for the finale, you will see. Wendeezy, myself, and Jack. Uh, get your tickets now. Uh, the New York finale is almost sold out. So if you want to go, click the link in our bio. Uh, we will be back next week. But this has been your Survivor News. Woo! Thank you. Survivor News. 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 Dot, dot, dot.